Hi, my name is Graydon Blair, and on behalf of Parley's Diesel Performance and Utah Biodiesel Supply, we're now going to show you how to make a large batch of biodiesel. I'm going to show you how do we collect our oil. We'll talk a little bit about how we filter our oil, how we transfer that oil into a biodiesel processor, how we do the process, and then how we use the fuel. We're going to talk about various little things along the way, so let's get started. First of all, we have a shop that we bring, we go out and collect oil in 55 gallon drums like this one. We put these drums behind restaurants that we've contracted with and they put oil in these drums and then we bring them back into this shop on the back of a truck. We have a lift gate on the back of a truck so it makes it real easy to swap them in and out. A lot of people will collect oil using pumps. They'll go and they'll actually pump the oil. We tried that for a little while but a lift gate was just so much easier. They're about $2,500 to $3,500 of the best thing in the world. If you get one, be sure not to let your uncle, aunts, friends, and everyone else know because soon you'll be transporting pianos down the street. Um, they're, they're just a wonderful piece of equipment to have on a truck. However, what we have when we go out and collect oil is we'll bring a barrel back here, we'll bring it right to about here, and then we'll get out a filter. And this looks nice and kind of grimy. It's a 400 micron barrel filter. We put it on top of the barrel, and then we filter the oil. Once our filtered oil is done, we're going to haul it into our production facility, which we'll show you in a moment, and we make the biodiesel. I want to tell you a little bit about what we use here. Remember in our smaller setting, we talked about using methanol, lye, and oil. Well, up here is our methanol. This methanol is a 325-gallon tank. Most of you won't need anything this large, but we make so much fuel that we get this delivered to us, and then we go through it, and then we take it back to our area. Uh, you can get methanol pretty cheap when you buy it this way. This is a 55-gallon drum. This is typically how methanol is purchased. Uh, it's the most common way, the easiest way to haul it home. It can transport in the back of a pickup, and then when you get it home, you get a pump to transport it into your biodiesel processor. These are our glycerin barrels, and as we produce the fuel, if you remember right, we had our byproduct of glycerin, and so we just take our glycerin out of our machine, and we'll come over here, and we just pour that glycerin right into these barrels. The glycerin is going to contain crude glycerin, some soap, some catalyst, and some methanol. We cap these barrels up, we use our lift gate, we throw it on the back of the truck, and we haul it over to a wastewater treatment plant where they take it off our hands, they add it to their methane digester, which produces methane gas that they recover and run in their generators, blah, blah, blah. Net, net, we get rid of it that way. They don't charge us for it. We don't get paid to have it taken off our hands, but it's a nice way to get rid of it. Once we've got the glycerin out of here, we then can take the fuel and we can make biodiesel with it. We're going to show you in a moment how we make the fuel. After we have our oil filtered in a drum such as this, we get a sump pump and all this is is a good old cheap sump pump from, a, from Home Depot, Lowe's, what have you. And we mounted a big pipe on it and a tube and we use this to fill the machine full of oil. We just turn it on, it works great. We put these drums on dollies so we move them over to our equipment and we're able to make biodiesel. Uh, a moment ago we showed you some methanol. This is a methanol drum right here. This is just a pump that we've attached to it so that we can quickly pump methanol into our machine. We're going to make a batch today and so you'll see how that works as well. Methanol, oil, and then if you pans over to my side over here, this is lots and lots of catalyst. This particular catalyst is potassium hydroxide and we use it to make biodiesel. If you remember, it takes methanol, oil, and catalyst to make fuel. Behind me on my right is fuel. This is biodiesel that we have produced in our machines, and we'll show you how that's done. And this, this fuel is ready to use in diesel pickups. Again, we're making it for about a dollar a gallon, and we're able to make our fuel and save us a lot of money by using what normal people would throw away. Welcome to biodiesel. Let's get started. We'll show you how to filter. We'll make a batch and be on our way. Once we've brought our oil into our warehouse, we have to filter it. In order to make biodiesel, it's a really good idea to filter it down so you get your crusties and crunchies out. This is just a 55 gallon drum strainer. It's a 400 micron. It's the one we personally use. It looks kind of gross and yucky, but we've probably put about 3,500 gallons of oil through this filter. 
So they're pretty durable and they last long. It's just a poly-based filter. You can get them on most sites. You can take a look at my site. I carry them as well. We're going to put the filter on. We're going to take our oil and we just simply pour it through it. Now oil coming from restaurants is really gross and nasty. As you see, there's some crusties and stuff in here. And as you notice, it doesn't like to go through this really quick. So we get ourselves a spatula with rounded corners and we just scrape back and forth to let those crusties go out. And so this oil is just going to filter through. You hear it filtering down in there? Once it's filtered, we'll take it into our lab or into our shop and we'll make biodiesel. So we're going to kind of let this stuff sit here for a while while we do that. One thing I do want to show you though, a lot of times you're going to get really thicky crap oil and you need to get rid of the crusties. So we cut a carboy open, which is typically what you're going to get oil in, and we just scrape it into there. So again, I'm just moving back and forth real slow. And you can see some of these chunks that we're getting out of that. It's usually food particles, it's stuff from the grill, it's french fries, it's, it's just all that stuff that they put in the oil over at the restaurant that you really don't want in your fuel, particularly in your truck, okay? So I'm just gonna filter that out. And our next step is showing you how we load our machine full of oil, and we're gonna make a batch. So we'll see you in a second. Our next step is we filtered the oil, and so it's now time to make the biodiesel. Remember from before, to make biodiesel, you need a heated mixer. Well, I happen to have sitting next to me one heck of a heated mixer. This is a stainless steel piece of equipment that has a massive mixer inside and a big heater on the bottom. It allows me to make biodiesel very quickly and in a fairly automated fashion. Now to make biodiesel, you don't need to have something like this, but we make so much that we like it. Let me tell you just how much we make. You've seen the fuel sitting behind me here a second ago. Last year alone, we made over 6,800 gallons of fuel that we used in a wide variety of diesel pickups. Anything from an 07 Duramax down to a 93 F, F350 to a stake bed, uh, large DT466 um, International Harvester engine. And we're running biodiesel in all of those. We have a Ford, Chevy, and a Dodge that we run it in, so we have it all across the gamut. We know about what it's going to do. We're in Utah here and we are cold outside and in the winters we are starting to blend. We make primarily our biodiesel from canola oil. Canola is wonderful cold flow uh, diesel properties. And so when it gets down to about 50 degrees we start blending. Before then we can kind of handle it. Some of our diesels are a little bit more sensitive, um, others aren't. Uh, but pretty much if it's a diesel, it'll handle biodiesel. It'll handle it really well. That's anything from large dump trucks big earth movers to farm equipment to uh, tiny little TDIs, you name it, if it's got a diesel engine in it and it's direct injected or indirect injected, chances are it'll run on biodiesel. Believe it or not, uh, Rudolph Diesel, when he made the engine, his goal was to have an engine that was ubiquitous with all sorts of different oils. And biodiesel just happens to be one of those that'll run in it. 